Hi and welcome to another video by Mike. I've had a lot of comments from people that have seen my other videos wanting to see certain aspects of my collection that they've seen. And so today I'm going to highlight the 300 great baseball cards of the 20th century by Mike Payne. And that's part of a big part of my collection and that's based on this book right here. Mike Payne was a guy at Beckett that worked as an editor and he created this list of what he considers to be the 300 great baseball cards from 1900 to 2000. And I thought that would be a great project to take on because it's a lot of iconic cards in the hobby that I would just love to have in my collection in general. And he just gave me a way to do it through his book. And so the book itself is pretty great. It goes through, um, I'll just flip through a couple of pages that, uh, probably won't be able to see very well, but my goal was starting from 1960 to 2000. I thought that would be a reasonable goal considering there's, you know, the, the Wagner and a bunch of Ty Cobb and a bunch of old um, Ruths and Gehrigs and things that I thought I would never be able to afford to own. And so I said from 1960 to 2000, that's a reasonable expectation of what to get. And you can see here, it shows the cards. It shows, it gives a brief description of the card and why this author, Mike Payne, thought it was a significant card and needed to be on this list. And so I go through and I highlight when I receive one of those cards and mark it in my book that I have it. I also keep it on a spreadsheet and track it that way so I can always be looking on eBay for cards that I'm missing. So it started for me just finding the cards, getting raw versions of those cards. And it quickly escalated to getting PSA graded versions of those cards, mainly because the older cards I wanted to have safe, you know, being slabbed. And I also wanted to um, put them in the PSA set registry because there's a set registry for this set. And as any of you guys know that use set registries, it's like crack. Once you get going and you get up that list, it's really uh, cool to see yourself progress in that set registry. Currently I'm number three all time for this set on the set registry. What I wanted to show maybe was a little bit of highlights from the 300 that I have. I'm uh, pushing um, 200 of the 300 is where I'm getting close. I'll put a link below for you to go look at my set registry on PSA. But what I've done is I keep all the cards, again, the PSA ones in these are just shoe boxes from the container store and you can see how nicely they hold PSA holders, uh, a whole bunch of them. Really, uh, I don't have them stuffed full, but they're really nice. So I'll pull out some here to show you. So my earliest card, again, this goes from 1900 to 2000. And my earliest card is a 1911 T205 gold border um, Frank Chance. Got this at the National last summer, as well as some of these other pretty significant cards. That was a place I really upgraded my collection and started going for um, some of the older cards. Let me revisit real quick. I did say I went from 1960 to 2000, and that's true. For a long time, I did that. Unfortunately, it got to where uh, I had most of them, and I have 90-something percent of the cards from 1960 to 2000. I just needed more of a challenge, so I started saying, well, how can I start going backwards and getting cards from 1900 through 1959 and finding those at, I'm trying to, all right, how can I get them reasonably at cost and trying to find just these absolutely iconic, beautiful uh, cards from the early 1900s. So that's why I have a 1911 T205 Gold Border Frank Chance, because I have gone back and started adding cards as I can find them and afford them from 1900 to 1959. So Frank Chance, I've got uh, one of my favorite cards, uh, 1933 Gaudi uh, Lou Gehrig. Very expensive card and it's, it's only graded to two. So for the earlier stuff, grade was important, but cost was more important. And so a lot of my older stuff, like that Frank Chance was a four. I'm just trying to get an at least aesthetically pleasing looking card. And the reason this is a two on this Gehrig is there's some paper loss on the back, but otherwise it's a really clean, pretty card. One of my favorites in my collection. Uh, I'm not gonna show you all of these cause there's a lot and it'll take a long time, but I'll show you some highlights. Here's a 33 Gaudi 
Hack Wilson. It's a four. Uh, there's just so many beautiful cards. I really uh, suggest you go look at the book, check it out, see what you think about all the cards. Uh, here's a Ducky Medwick from 1935, Diamond Stars. Here's another card that I got at the National. Uh, 1935 Gowdy, four and one. It's the one with Ruth. Uh, Rabbit Moranville's on there. He's another Hall of Famer. This is my first and only Ruth card that I own. The Garrig was my own, that's my only Garrig card. But there's plenty of Ruths. There's six or seven Ruths in the top 300. There's several Garrigs. Um, the player most represented on the top 300 is probably Mickey Mantle, if I think about it. He's got a whole bunch of cards on there. So. Here's the Ruth. So I had to cut the video and edit it because my son walked in, but I was at uh, Honus Wagner, uh, 1948 Leaf is in there. It's a, this is a PSA four. Again, I got this at the national last year. And then what he does is uh, really interesting in the book. There are players in there that I've never even heard of. And I know quite a bit about baseball and the history. And there are players and cards in this, top 300 that you just scratch your head and think, why is that card on there? And this is one of them. It's a 1949 Bowman Eddie Waitkiss. If you've never heard of Eddie Waitkiss, I hadn't either. And I learned through this book that he was a player that the, the natural story that Robert Redford portrayed in the film was based on. He was shot by a mysterious lady and his career, he never recovered and so it was an interesting uh, that, to find a card like this in that book. And I learned a lot of, about a whole lot of cards in the book that I had never heard of. And this is one of them. So you've got things, great cards. There's a lot of 51 Bowmans. Yogi Berra, Early Wind, Joe Garagiola, Warren Spawn, Larry Doby. Again, all of these are, I would call them medium grade. Um, and then you get into the tops stuff. Uh, there's a 51 tops red back Yogi Berra. There's a bunch of 52 tops in this deal. Uh, I don't have but two. One of them is Gus Zerniel. And because of the little baseballs kind of stuck to the bat is why that card is in there. 1952 tops Bob Feller. So then they got some really great cards. Here's a 53 Bowman Color Stan Musial. One of my favorite cards of all time is this one right here. It's a 53 Bowman Color Pee Wee Reese. And the action shot of him turning a double play is just beautiful and very well done by Bowman. This is a three, but it's, it's nice. Uh, you'd be surprised how nice the cards can still look and be threes, fours, fives. And it just makes it look like a baseball card that's, you know, 60 years old. And I really like that. As much as I'd love a high-grade card, a high-grade version of that card, it's not worth the extra money for me to do that. Really, like, here's a 53 tops Yogi Berra. 53 tops Satchel Page rookie. Um, here's the first mantle that I have in, this, in the top 300, and that's the 54 Bowman. Uh, this happens to be a three. And there's, again, a lot of um, mantle in this set. 54 Bowman, Willie Mays, and Duke Snyder. 54 Tops has a lot of great cards. Uh, the bookend of that set is Ted Williams. So here's card number one of that set. There's a awesome Jackie Robinson. Uh, Tommy Lasorda has his rookie card in that set. There's the other bookend of that that I said is the other Ted Williams, and there it is. This is a two and a half. So again, but nice card on the front. Uh, I'm actually kind of curious why it only got a two and a half, but it's not so bad. 54, or sorry, 55 Bowman, very classic set, TV, color TV. Uh, and in this, I've got the Aaron the mantle. There's several others. Jocko Conlon is in there as a Hall of Fame umpire. So his card, his only card in the top 300 and even why an umpire would be in there. Only Mike Payne can answer that, but it is. 
Uh, you got a lot of great Hall of Fame rookie cards. Harmon Killebrew is one. Uh, another 56, uh, starting 56 tops, this is Hank Aaron. What a lot of people don't realize about Hank Aaron in this card is that top screwed up. And so that's Hank Aaron's face, but that's not Hank Aaron sliding into home plate. It's actually Willie Mays. And they just airbrushed the uniform to make it look like the Braves uniform at the time. But that is really Willie Mays sliding in. So a little cool stuff that you learn in that book that I didn't know before. And I know now. So there's a lot of great Clemente cards. Here's a 56. Again, only a three, but um, it's all like, you know, I need to get them, a lot of them and they're expensive. Here's 57 tops, Willie Mays. Uh, Don Drysdale, rookie. Again, you probably can't see these very well as I'm showing them off, but you can certainly go again to my uh, link to the PSA set registry and see it. I'll also put a link to a uh, photo album so that you can go look at all of them there. I have them posted. A lot of great duo cards that they put in this top 300. This one's uh, Bear Mantle from 1957 Tops. 58 Tops has Mantle and Aaron. Uh, Sparky Anderson. And they do a lot of interesting cards about uh, things like this. This is uh, from 59 Tops when Mays makes his the catch in the World Series. So really neat that they put cards like that that had an impact. Roy Campanella, 1959 top symbol of courage card. It just talks about his uh, personal comeback from his car accident. 1960 Fleer, Ted Williams, so the last Ted Williams card ever produced when he was still playing is here in 1960 Fleer. So that's one box that kind of goes through the older stuff. I've got literally over here Box number two. So this has all the cards from 1960, like Yaz Rookie, Willie McCovey Rookie, Moore Mantles, Roger Maris's, all the way through. Uh, this goes. This box goes through 72. Box number three is 73, and this is where I really start having a whole bunch of them. Uh, 73 through 84 Donruss, which one of the iconic cards in 84 was the Don Mattingly rookie. I actually remember pulling these from packs and just being so excited in 84. I started collecting in 81, so it was a big deal to have all these rookies um, coming out uh, in the early 80s. So it's got 83 tops. It's got Gwen, Boggs, Sandberg all on that list, cards that I certainly wanted to pull back in the day. Um, a couple cards from the 60s that I think would be cool to show. Everybody loves to see, again, great rookie cards. So there's the Ryan. A three, but still a good card. Here's a PSA four, Johnny Bench rookie. So just, again, wonderful old cards that really had a significant impact on the hobby. My fourth box and last box is uh, 84 through 2000. This box has, you got your, um, on that list, the trifecta of 84 Fleer Update cards, which includes Clemens, uh, Doc Gooden, and of course, Kirby Puckett. On the modern cards, I've really tried to get as good a grades as I can. Uh, this Puckett's a seven, because otherwise they're insanely expensive, but, and so is the Clemens actually a seven. So Puckett and Clemens are seven for that. I'd love an eight or a nine, but you know, I, I can get other cards for what the marginal cost difference is there. But Gooden's an eight. So on the modern stuff, it's pretty much seven or better. Um, well, I have tons of eights and nines, tens even on the modern stuff. So I've really tried to, to do that. Like here's an 89 upper deck 
Mark McGuire, it's a Gen Mint 10. So you can find a lot of the modern stuff very inexpensively online on a relative basis, but uh, it, it adds up when you're trying to buy this many cards, especially the older stuff. Um, the last card in the set is, uh, or in the top 300 that I have, is the 1996 Topps Mickey Mantle. This is a commemorative card that they did after he passed away. This happens to be a Jim Mint 10 as well. And so they have cards, the start of the era of the, you know, game used cards. The Griffey is in there from, oh, I guess it's 1997 Upper Deck. Uh, game Jersey, they've got Ruth back cards from the 500 hist piece of history, 500 home run club set. Um, Autograph cards are in there, like the first ones that kind of came out. The DiMaggio 1992 score, which I don't have yet. The 1990 Upper Deck Reggie Jackson card that was a just an insanely hard pull, uh, even though there were 2,500 of them back in 1990. That idea of pack inserted certified autographs was just starting, and it, it became obviously what it is today. And I appreciate you taking a look at my top 300. If you have any questions, you can email me at gonzalesnut at hotmail.com. Gonzalesnut at hotmail.com. Be happy to answer any questions, send you any pictures or anything you want to see, but thanks for looking and I hope you enjoyed the video.